Yeah, I live in, uh, I live in Lansing now. I'm waiting tables, so, you know, doing, obviously I'm doing all right. Um, I'm not a very good waiter, though. I think I'm just too old to, like, do a job I don't give a fuck about. Like, I just walk around like, here, you know, like, I'm not one of those, you know, you, you go to restaurants, you get those really uppity, just, like, up your ass, perky servers who are just out of fucking 12 all the time. I'm not one of those people, but, you know, you have them. Like, I walk around the restaurant, and I hear other waitresses. They're all like, hi, I'm Katie. I'm going to be taking care of you. I don't say shit like that. First of all, my name's not Katie. That would just be weird. But uh, more importantly, oh, really? Can we get, can we get her a uh, free drink, or you would just take it anyway? Never mind. Never mind. You're cool. You're cool, but thanks, Katie. Um, <laughs> no, but I, more than that, though, it's the whole taking care of you thing. I don't really, I know it's just a dumb little language thing, but it's like, I'm not here to take care of shit. I'm here to wait on you, take care of you. I'm here to fucking bring you Sprite refills, not take care of you. You start choking, you're on your own, buddy. I'll bring you another Sprite if you think that might help. It's gonna make you act like less of a bitch about the whole choking thing. Yeah, Sprite's on me, dude. Really, if you start choking, you're probably gonna start focusing my attention on my other tables who are more statistically likely to finish the meal and tip me. Good luck with that chokey. I'll see you on the way back. But I'm not a monster. I'll check on someone if there's choking. Of course I will. I'll be like, hey, man, how'd that work out with your buddy? He was choking. Oh, you lost him? Ugh, shit. I'm going to have to charge you for that Sprite. <laughs> and then, too, I, uh, I have that book that I write orders in, but really I just write dumb joke ideas all day. So it's inevitable that, like, one day I'm like, you know, I take people's orders. I'm supposed to read it back to them to verify that I got the information right. It's inevitable that one day I cross the streams and when I'm relaying an order back, I'll be like, okay, you had the chicken salad sandwich, you hate your job, your girlfriend won't fuck you, and you had the sliders. I'll get that in right away. <laughs> that does happen. I get, I get people their food. It's like the wrong food. They freak out. Like, how, the f how did he get the, the order wrong? I, I saw him write it down. It's like, no, you saw me writing a fucking dumb joke about monkeys or something that I was thinking about <laughs> as I was looking down your daughter's shirt. Pretending to listen to you tell me about whatever fucking allergy she has or whatever. She's not allergic to dressing like a whore, sir. I'll tell you that. That's evident from here. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I drop people's food, too. Don't do that if you're a waiter. Don't, don't drop the food. Don't do it. And if someone drops your food, if you're at a restaurant, I know you want to yell at them and be mad. And I get it. Like, you're hungry. You waited. And some idiot dropped your food. That's fine. But, like, I'm asking you, try not to be a dick about it. Because generally, you'll get a free meal out of it or something. You know what I mean? They'll take care. They'll compensate you for your, for your loss. I, on the other hand, might have spent upwards of 10 minutes jacking off into that food. So just <laughs> think about someone else's plight is what I'm getting at. Put your time into that. Yeah, man. I'm dedicated to all the wrong things. Says the stand-up comic at White's Bar, you know? Like, I'm just saying, I think that's been made evident. No, I'm just joking. This is a lot of fun. But um, every time I drop food, maybe it's because I'm a comedian. I think about shit too much. But I think about what a sad ending it is to the story of that food. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you think about all the work and the, pow like the, the hours that go into making a plate of food just for some fuckhead like me to drop it, it's depressing. Like, you know, farmers get up in the fucking crack of dawn. And they farm their fucking farm all day, whatever they do. And, like... They're all, like, absent from their daughter's lives because they're on a goddamn tractor all day. She's experimenting with lesbianism and, like, hard drugs and shit just so he can fucking be a farmer. And then truck drivers get the shit and drive it across the country. They're pulling, like, 28-hour hauls at once, doing fucking rail after rail, a crank off the dashboard, risking their lives, not to mention STDs from truck stop hookers, just so they can get some fucking lettuce to an Applebee's somewhere or something, you know? It gets there, it gets to where it's going, then the fucking cooks come in, they come in at like 7 in the morning, they're all fucking hungover or stoned or on parole or Mexican or sometimes all four. <laughs> just, just pissed off, the fucking servers saunter in at 11.30, talking about how tired they are. Oh my god, dude. I only got eight hours of sleep last night, isn't that fucked up? <laughs> Ooh, man, we went for it. And they're just sitting there sharpening their knives, just waiting for some punk-ass server to step out of line so we can finally fly off the fucking handle carve his manifesto in my side or something with a butcher knife so that with my dying breath I might say I think you spelled that wrong <laughs> not sure but no man all that work and then there's like an unspoken agreement every time I take food that's like hey Mark can you walk 10 feet with this and not drop it I'm like yeah I'll do it nah fuck I dropped it <laughs> I dropped it right on the floor no I didn't trip I didn't I just dropped it I'm a fucking idiot call the farmer tell him we're on <laughs> yeah so what else? I'm really broke. Is anyone else really broke? Anyone? Yeah. Yes. I like your enthusiasm for it. That's awesome. Fuck yeah. No, man, I'm broke. I, uh, you know, the worst part about being broke is getting the mail, I think, like the old mailbox mail. Remember that? It's 2012. We're balls deep in the 21st century. Good news does not come in that fucking thing anymore. That is all just junk mail and bad news and horrible shit. 
life is not like Monopoly. You've never just gotten a piece of mail and you're like, oh my God, there's a bank error in my favor. There's 50 bucks in here. <laughs> the fuck? That's incredible. Hey, did I get drunk and enter a beauty contest? $15, second prize. <laughs> Who beat me? Who did I beat? That's weird. Can I borrow your battleship? My dog is in jail. I need to go see him. No, life doesn't work like that. That's ridiculous. When you get the mail, it's the same bullshit all the time. It's like, pass due notice. We're going to turn you over to collections. You don't live here. Stop squatting. You know, the same bullshit that you have to put up with all the fucking time. It's so frustrating. But I think when you get the mail, though, like, you just have to be ready to laugh. Like, sometimes you get that bill you forgot about, slip through the cracks. You're like, oh, 60 bucks. I don't have that. That sucks. That's depressing. But once in a while, if you look for it, Poverty can be so fucking wacky and hilarious. Like, you know, you get that bill and you're just like, <laughs> I'll never have this much money. <laughs> oh, that's rich. That is adorable that they think I have this much money. There's a comma in there. Look at that. <laughs> These assholes think I have comma money. What is that? <laughs> like my fucking bank account is structured grammatically like a sentence. Like there's parts to it and fucking order. It's not just a random clusterfuck shit parade of random bottle deposit returns and a tax refund check once a year. Like, no, there's a plan. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> and then you throw that mail on the fire because it's getting fucking cold. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit fat, you guys. That concerns me. Not for the traditional reasons. Not my self-esteem, not my health. I just can't afford new clothes. That's a bummer. <laughs> this is what I'm wearing, whether it fits or not. Like, I have to, I, a lot of times I try to wear button-up shirts, but that's, like, they stopped buttoning, you know? Like, I would, but, like, like, you know that look that's really sexy on the top half of a woman where her tits are just, like, bursting out? That's not a good look on the bottom half of my fucking torso. <laughs> I tried, I can't pull it off. I shot a bartender in the eye with a button. Bing, sorry. <laughs> then they, I wear these pants all the time because uh, they're the good ones. I have two pairs of pants that I wear, and the other ones, the zipper um, comes down all day. Have you guys ever had the pair of pants that the zipper just works its way down, and you just wear them all day anyways? You put them on, you know they're the fucking pants, but like, oh, I'm late, whatever, and then you just have resigned yourself to a fade of checking your fucking fly every 12 seconds. By noon, you forget you're even doing it everywhere you go. Just... My shit in, what's up? Hey, can I get a number 12, please? Why is this guy looking at me like I'm some fucking weirdo? Fuck him, right? Fucking idiot. No, so that's happening. And I have my new underwear since like 2003. So like a lot of the fly holes are all whomped out and shit. They're not even doing the job of underwear anymore. I just put them on because I feel like that's what adults do in the morning. <laughs> They're just, I'm just wearing more pants under my pants. There's no fucking reason for it or anything. And like I've got my pants and then I've got shorter, more pants underneath these pants for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why. But no, it's like the fly holes are all fucky and whomped out, you know. And, and I'm worried like if once in a while, like once in a while my penis will like check out what's going on like a periscope in a World War II movie or something. Just like, what's going on? We at the store? Okay, cool. Just want to check out, you know. That happens. I'm worried if that's happening all the time and then my zipper's coming down once in a while, I'm worried there's going to be an eclipse one night. I'm going to be somewhere horribly inappropriate. Not that there's a lot of good places to have your dick out, but like somewhere just awful, like the library or something, you know. And I can just see this is exactly what's going to happen to the library. will come up to me and be a real bitch about it and be like, sir, you can't do that in here. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. It's not... I'm not being weird, I just, my zipper and the, the underpants, it's an accident, I'm so sorry, it won't happen again. But librarians are an uptight, stuck up bunch, they won't be happy with that, they'll be like, oh, that doesn't explain the erection. <laughs> I love to read, you guys. <laughs> this is cool. Okay, I'm running out of time, I want to tell you a few more quick things here. Um, I, like I said, I was, uh, I was single for a long time, I learned a lot of lessons, it's scary being single and a borderline alcoholic, you know what I mean, like you find yourself mixed up in some adventures. But with every misadventure I got into, I tried to learn a lesson. Here's a lesson I learned. Fellas, take this home with you. If you're ever with a heavier woman, there's no good way to request that a 69 is over with. <laughs> and tapping out is the worst one you could ever choose. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a 15-year-old uh, niece called Amber. It's not really her name, Amber. We just call her that because she uh, keeps getting kidnapped. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes people don't like that joke, and they're like, oh, that's fucked up. And you should know, if you're worried about that joke, you should know, like, as comedians, some things we make up, some things are from our real life. And if you're wondering about the origin of that joke, if it's okay to laugh about it or not, I will tell you that we get her back most of the time. So, <laughs> last time I saw her, which was a while ago, but she had a sense of humor about it, okay? Up until the last time, we got her back every time. I'll have you know, okay? <laughs> We're batting, like, 800. That's fucking remarkable. No, um, <laughs> one last thing before I get out of here. Uh, thanks again, by the way, guys. This was awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, thanks to Whites for having us. 
the bar staff, everyone. I really appreciate it. So I was at um I was at an Applebee's. I was at Applebee's the other night with some friends of mine, and uh, there was an item on the dessert menu called the Mile High Ice Cream Pie. And I was joking around with the waitress. I said, excuse me, if I ordered the Mile High Ice Cream Pie, would, would that put me in the Mile High Club? She said, no, it doesn't work like that. I said, oh, what if I fuck it? You better bring me two, sweetheart. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much. My name is Mark Roebuck. Thank you. Chris Howard. <laughs>